You know, a couple of years ago, my family went on a Caribbean cruise. I was pretty much looking forward to it for one reason, the all-you-can-eat buffet. And if there's nothing more exciting or intimidating than a buffet, everything you could possibly want is right there in front of you. Similarly, choosing a shop management system can be an overwhelming decision. What's best for you? We're here to help you make healthy choices. This episode of SOS Shop Owner Solutions is brought to you by Shop Boss, the leading shop management solution for independent auto repair shops. Built by a former shop owner, Shop Boss offers all the cutting edge features and integrations you need to keep your shop on top. From built-in DVI and remote payments capabilities to a powerful business reporting dashboard. Try this cloud-based solution free for 30 days. Visit shopboss.net slash podcast to learn more. I'm Doug Coffin with Shop Owner Magazine. Welcome to SOS Shop Owner Solutions. In this series, we're exploring some of the nightmares that today's shop owners face. We'll talk about those 3 a.m. panics. Those things that either wake you up or keep you from falling asleep in the first place. And just like that buffet sitting there waiting for me at midnight, shop owners can find just about anything they want in an SMS these days. But how can they pick what they need? To help us choose wisely, I'm happy to welcome Danielle Commander from Commander Mechanical in Claremont, Alberta, Canada, and Kevin Robinson from Shop Boss. Also with me today is Vic Tarasic from Shop Owner Coach. Vic, there are a lot of options when it comes to shop management systems. How can you know when to select a different SMS and how can you make a healthy choice? Mm, healthy choice is <laughs> what it's all about. It's like that buffet. You don't want to choose that. Choose wisely. <laughs> <laughs> there's desktop, which are traditional. There's your off cloud base. And there's all new ones coming on the market all the time. Shop owners are faced with, with a pretty daunting task, which is why we've got our guests here today to help us navigate the buffet <laughs> of SMS. So Danielle, I'm gonna come to you f first. You chose Shop Boss. I'm sure you looked at uh, others. And when you did, what was your experience? Okay, so yeah, you're absolutely right. I When I was choosing um, my software management solution, I researched um, a lot of different programs. Um, what drew me to Shop Boss was the user ability of it, I guess I could say. Um, it was just really, really easy to use the program. I believe it's because it's Windows based and we're all kind of used to Windows. So it was um, it was really easy to use. It's modern technology and um, it's flexible. So uh, we own a shop that's heavy duty and automotive repair. So we need a software that can do um, both types of repairs and can um, look up both types of vehicles. So um, a lot of the software that's out there will do heavy duty only or automotive only. And I did not want to run two different programs. So um, Shop Boss is something that fit um, my needs um, as far as user ability and as far as flexibility in the program. Um, so that is what I went with. How long did it take you to navigate these waters? And how many different management systems did you look at? Oh, um, I probably looked at about five or eight different programs. Um, I It took a while. Like, I mean, I needed to make sure that I did the right, um, you know, that I had the right solution. I didn't want to try to sign up for something and then just use it for two or three weeks and then decide that I didn't like it. So um, another handy feature with Shop Boss is the fact that they have the 30-day trial um, that you can just kind of run um, a trial version of it without having to actually um, input all your data. So I tried it for a few 
um, a couple weeks and then I basically used it as a shadow program while I still used my um, previous software and then I used Shop Boss in shadow with it for a couple weeks just to make sure um, that it was going to work for me without um, needing to switch again within a few weeks. What was it about the uh, about Shopwash that kind of made it stand out compared to the other uh, products you looked at? One thing that made it stand out to me was um, actually when I was doing my research, um, I was looking at the Shopwash program while Saturday morning while my husband and I were uh, watching Garage Rehab, which is one of our favorite shows. Um, on a, so we were watching Garage Rehab, and I was. Um, researching different software programs and you know I was looking at shop boss and I was like wow I really like this I like how the inventory screens here and I, I like how I can text message customers and I like you know different things about it so I was showing my husband how you know this program was was great and fit all the things that I needed in it and then the you know the credits kind of came up at the end of the show and it said you know we installed shop boss in this shops um, for this shop to use and I went whoa hold on a second <laughs> um, these guys are using this exact software that I'm researching so um, you know for for me that was a moment where I was like okay I'm gonna look into this a lot further because that added to me some credibility to the program as well like you know if other shops are using it um, it's being recommended on garage rehab then it's obviously you know a good a good program that um, people are, are, are using quite effectively. So that's kind of, that was a huge moment for me where I decided that I was going to pursue it further. So Kevin, when are you going to get Danielle her own TV show? <laughs> you know, that's got to be in the works as far as maybe like pipeline <laughs> development, I would say. Um, I think obviously so far she's uh, been handling herself on video and audio very well. So uh, maybe that'll be a future, uh, I don't know, maybe we can make it a buddy cop comedy. I don't know. Maybe she can be the, the laughs and I'll play, play the straight man. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there you go. So what does differentiate uh, the SMS platforms in the market today? Yeah, so um, you made a really good analogy earlier about eating at the buffet. Um, you know, SMS is really sort of, and this will, I am sure, will kind of be a theme throughout this whole <laughs> this whole episode, which is fine. Uh, the common theme is that SMS, for the most part, runs a very, very large and wide gamut of functionality, service. Um, some have built-in features like DVI. So you could literally start out with a shop management system that you know is either free and is you know basically ticket tracking, or you could get something that's completely robust that includes DVI, CRM. So there's kind of this large variety, and I think one of the hard things, especially for business owners out there, is figuring out what fits the best for my particular shop, um, what has the functionality that from a baseline gets me to where I, where I need to be. And I think getting over the hump um, is probably the biggest difficulty. I'm sure Danielle can talk about it a little bit more, but in a lot of cases when we will onboard and launch new customers, the biggest question they always have is, how much pain is this gonna cause me as I switch over? Danielle made a really good point about sort of running you know, shadow program, right? Which that's one of the reasons why we provide a free trial. We understand that shops have their own processes. They might be using a competitor of ours. They might be using another solution um, and we want to be able to get them in the system, creating ROs, tracking those through the system and using the the program in a way that they know they'll be successful when it's all said and done. Because switching SMS systems, every single customer that I've talked to is a complete pain, whether it's data migration or getting you know change management and technician buy-in at your shop. So um, really making sure that your team is on board, as well as making sure that your data is brought over. Those are really two of the biggest things that we try to focus on as we go through the explanation of here's what the process is going to look like as they're interested in us. Vic, you made the comment to me at one point, whether it was tongue in cheek or based in fact, your best shop management system is the one you already have. Is that more of a case because the change is, as Kevin said, so frustrating. It's a combination of factors. 
The change is challenging. A lot of times a shop owner wants a silver bullet, he grabs the wrong one. Now he's got data migration and he's got issues of having to go back to the old one. The, 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 the data migration issue as a whole can be a challenge. In, in some systems, it's, they don't always make it over. A lot of times the shop owner's not utilizing everything that that system has. Uh, and unfortunately, shop owners have the, the propensity of going after the, the shiny thing and not taking the time to research it. So that's, that's a, lot of, a lot of reasons why that said the, the, is, is all the things I said, but you gotta get, you've got to get to look at what you currently have and what's out there. You know, just don't, don't just ch just chase that next best thing like like Daniel did. You know, she, mm -hmm. she saw, you know, something on there that affirmed to her, "This is what I'm already looking at." She liked the feature. She took the time. It's like me at midnight. I've made bad decisions and ended up with heartburn. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> with so many choices out there, uh, are there cases where the final decision just comes down to that frustration? All right. Yeah, this is what I'm. This is what I'm stuck with. This is what I'm going to use. Rather than as Danielle did, I'm going to try all these different things and find the one that works for me. How common is it that that shop owners just say, "All right, it is what it is." It's it's pretty common, Kevin. But how how would you say how how common is that? I would say so. And one of those reasons is just there's not the capacity internally to do all these things. Like Danielle was even saying, like she was validated by an episode of garage rehab at night sometime. Like, and I'm sure that that was after a 14 hour day at the shop. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these aren't large scale businesses that have business developments, departments and salespeople and all these different things that can really sort of bend and stretch all these different softwares and systems. It's, it really honestly has to be a risk versus reward. Um, some shops will try to stay with their current provider as, mo as long as they possibly can um, and try to customize, fix, um, you know, flex their current systems to really fit their need as a, as a corporation or as a business. Um, but really, it comes down to a little bit of a, of a leap of faith um, based on the needs and the value that's actually being provided. Some of that, you know, Vicky brought up a really good point about, you know, sort of the silver bullet or the shiny object. Um, I think that's the case in just about every every segment of the market, whether it be shop management or if you look more on the automotive side with franchise or independent buy here, pay here. Uh, there's always going to be kind of a flavor of the month. Um, mm -hmm. And you're absolutely right that even though it is a flavor, it's not necessarily the flavor uh, that matches up with what the shop absolutely needs. So we try to address that as closely as we possibly can. We actually have a really good um, sort of prospecting process, um, you know, validation process to make sure that, you know, we're the right solution for the shop. We've had so many different customers reach out to us, whether it be aviation customers or agriculture customers, um, you know, not even specifically shop management or shop uh, repair shops. Um, and in some cases, we'll just, you know, we try to be as, as flat out honest as we possibly can be. Um, but there's a lot of different pieces of the market out there that handle repair of some sort of you know, machinery that needs a different software solution. I think what you're seeing now is shop management software really sort of emerging as being kind of the the innovation leader um, across the board. And there's a lot of different, um, you know, segments of that that are reaching out and trying to take advantage of it, whether it fits their business or not. Um, but it's really good to see, right? If, if a bunch of, you know, SMS systems can be super innovative, provide a ton of value, um, and bring success like it has for you know Danielle and her shop. I think that there's a lot of um, you know a lot of conversation that takes place and a lot of you know really good um, you know demand. I guess you could say in the market for solutions that are actually trying to lead the edge a little bit as opposed to just stay in the status quo. And shops would probably be in the same regard in that case. Some of them just want to be bigger and better than what they were and seeing the opportunity there. And that's what they're trying to recognize. All right. So, so Danielle, I'm going to come back to you. So uh, it's a two-part two part question. What caused you to move away from your old shop management system in, in the respect of what didn't you like? And then what did it take for you to get a full-on learning experience to be able to, to, able to manage, properly run that shop management system? Okay, so it was a few years ago um, that we wanted to make the the switch. Um, 
I was using just a accounting, like a, a bookkeeping program, and I was just doing my invoices manually on the bookkeeping program. Okay. Um, and then I got to the point where we were, you know, kept growing as a business, getting bigger. And it just got to the point where, okay, I cannot, um, you know, every, every invoice basically needed to be put in from scratch. Um, so I was like, I need something that's going to automate this system a little bit more. So um, I actually, I did exactly what you guys talked about. It was just, you know, I grabbed that silver bullet, the one that um, everyone talked about, our, our, uh, our tool rep recommended and, um, oh, well, if he recommends it and lots of other jobs, use it and, try. and I tried it and, uh, I only tried it for a couple weeks and I just, you know, I said, um, we can't do this. Like it, it was antique and, um, I'm sure you guys know the program well, but, um, you know, it was just out of date. It was clumsy. It was, you needed to switch from this screen to that screen and to get everything in the right spot. And um, you couldn't, like Kevin said, like, you know, you need to modify it to fit your operation, but that program just could not modify at all. And it wouldn't um, transfer my data properly. It was just really cumbersome and really um, old, basically. I just want to call it old. I don't, I don't know if that, <laughs> it, it is. If that I'm makes sure you're any sense. Old. <laughs> yeah. If, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Who's old? Um, but it was just a cumbersome program. And it was, I wanted to say it was like dot matrix based or, you know, just, it was old style and I couldn't, um, you know, it just wasn't flexible. So I was like, okay, this is not going to work. I cannot go back to using the bookkeeping program. Mm -hmm. I need something that's going to, you know, work. Um, and so that's kind of when I came across to shop boss and and like i said earlier you just need it to be flexible and like for us because of the fact that we do different types of work i needed you know different shop rates and i needed different i i, I needed to be able to put the different vehicles in there so um shop boss was able to do that for me and um when we were talking about it earlier um one of what my husband said, <laughs> what he likes about Shop Boss is he said, even a mechanic can use it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Um, but that's true, right? My guys all have tablets. They all, you know, they use their tablets at their bays in the shop and they can just, you know, clock in and clock out and add their own parts. And, you know, they can do everything that they need to do as well. So um, it's just very user friendly and, that's what I needed was something that everybody can use. I don't have to spend a whole lot of time training people how to use it. Um, and as far as data migration, um, I don't recall even migrating any data. I just kind of started from scratch and just started entering um, as I went along and then just built the program as I went. So um, that worked for us. Daniel, what was the time frame? The, the time span really from when you started looking at changing your SMS to the end of the process and was shop boss the final answer or was it somewhere earlier in this in the process where you tried it tried something else and then went back to it um I'm gonna say the total amount of time probably was around a month or so um, just from choosing the other programs and like I was a little I was very cautious because I already went with um, the program that was recommended by the tool company and um, already had a lot of issues with that so I thought if I'm switching again I need to be a hundred percent certain so I did take a fair amount of time to research that and come up with what I wanted so uh, I will say that shop bot and to answer the second part of your question, shop boss um, was basically my final solution. Like I did not sign up for an interim one in, in between that. So I just made sure that I did my research really, really well. And then I chose shop boss and that was my final um, 
choice. Well, this episode of Shop Owner Solutions is brought to you by Shop Boss, the leading shop management solution for independent auto repair shops. Built by a former shop owner, Shop Boss offers all the cutting edge features and integrations you need to keep your shop on top, from built in DVI and remote payments capabilities to a powerful business reporting dashboard. You can try this cloud based solution free for 30 days. Visit shopboss.net slash podcast to learn more. You know, Kevin, in there, the words are built by a former shop owner. Explain that. Explain what shop owners' knowledge was to bring to uh, to bring to development. What, what's the importance of having a product that that was built by a shop owner? Yeah, uh, really good point. And you know, there's there's a I feel like there's a lot of solutions out there that kind of go down that road, right? We've we've kind of lived that that life, and we we created our products to address some of the pain points that we experienced in it, but you know, the first part is experiential and that goes, you know, regardless of what system you're talking about, you know, our, our founder and CEO, Chris, who's featured on another podcast. Um, I think that was recorded a bit earlier, um, worked in a shop for a number of years, really recognized that, you know, there was a lot of limitations with the current program he was using. One of which I'm sure we've already kind of sort of alluded to earlier today, um, especially with his ability to be remote, uh, his ability to manage a shop from multiple devices. So, um, what's interesting about Chris Boshaw's case, the the CEO of Shop Boss, is that not only was he part of a shop, running a shop, um, he's also an engineer by trade. So it's not that he just went out and you know contracted a bunch of um, resources. Um, he actually wrote the majority of the program himself. Now, obviously, we have a you know pretty substantial development team at this point, but um, Chris is a very unique case where not only was he the um, client, so he was the shop itself. He was also the product manager. He was also the, the the developer, the engineer, the quality control person. So every single thing that went into the build out of Shop Boss was something based off of experiences that he had uh, within his shop as well. And I think a lot of that is reflected in the things that Danielle is talking about in terms of customization and flexibility within the app. Because without those things, we understand that all businesses are a little bit different. Uh, we want to make sure that we provide, you know, different shades essentially for the different types of businesses that we also uh, have as customers. So, um, absolutely, the shop experience is is something that you know lends itself to the current state of Shop Boss. You know, almost a decade later, essentially, with a lot of the different features and functionalities that we've actually released. Kevin, would you say that the decision of which system is right is dependent not only on the shop's need, but is the software right for the shop? You know, are you guys the right solution for every shop that's out there? Great question. Yeah. Um, you know, I kind of, kind of, kind of made the, made the uh, <laughs> assumption earlier, right? There are some, some different, um, types of companies or some ty different types of segments of the industry that just weren't built for automotive shop management, right? Like I talked before about like aviation, right? Like a lot of the the uh, ticket creation, VIN decoding and, and all those things that we do are very specific to automotive. When it comes to independent auto repair shops, that's really sort of our bread and butter. So when you say, you know, does shop boss fit the profile of just about every shop out there? The, the answer is yes. I mean, anybody that needs to have a very fluid workflow process for their ticket statuses and inventory screen, you know, customer facing features, um, you know, that can help them communicate with their, their clients and customers. Um, that type of thing is, is obviously going to meet the need of just about everybody out there. Now, um, there's a lot of different, um, questions that can potentially go in there as well, right? If, if somebody needs access to, you know, certain integrated tools, um, you know, we also have open APIs that we connect to. We have over 30 different integrated partners, um, you know, between it from, gosh, accounting to DVI that I had mentioned before, uh, tons of marketing and CRM. So we try to accommodate as much as we possibly can. I mean, that's probably the, the biggest thing of any SMS provider that wants to be competitive in this market. They have to have the ability to work with others because we know that there's a ton of best in class solutions out there. And uh, we don't want to close the door on any of them because we understand that there's value for that 
um, no matter the shot profile. So, Daniel, I'm going to ask Daniel, and then I'm going to come back to, to Kevin. Something piqued my interest. As a coach, time tracking. So the fact that it's got a time clock is huge. So do you guys track the jobs from start to finish, or they just clock in and out throughout the day? Um, we do both. I have them clock in in the morning. Um, they they clock in, you know, for payroll, I guess you could say. And then I have them clock in and out the jobs for so that I can track their efficiency and their productivity. So we do both. That, and it's that very music to my hmm? ears. Efficiency and tracking of efficiency and productivity. A lot of times you'll hear a shop owner who's got a new shop management system. He won't use that module. And when it comes to what a shop owner sells, the only thing a shop owner sells is time. <laughs> and the more effectively they sell that time, the more profitable their business is. And the fact that Danielle's tracking efficiency and productivity means she's she's watching it, she's measuring it, she's managing it, and she's becoming more profitable day by day. Is that accurate, Danielle? Well, we hope we're becoming more profitable day by day. <laughs> but absolutely, we... <laughs> <laughs> the hope is for profit, um, but absolutely, we need to know if our mechanics are, you know, putting out, for lack of a better word, like, you know, um, we're retail-based operations, so if I bail my customer an hour, did I get an hour labor out of that? And, um, or, you know, did I bail my customer an hour, but it took the technician four hours to do the job? So. In that case, I'd only be at 25% productivity. Maybe I need to, um, you know, relook at that because now I'm, you know, losing money. Um, so the goal, of course, is one for one. Um, but we need to be profitable, and it's a very good tracker. And it's good for, you know, the guys really like it as well. The guys like to know what they're doing, and they like to know how effective that they're being. So I think it's it's great all the way around. And Having said that, the guys can, in tech mode, they can look up their own productivity too, so they can keep track of, you know, what they're doing as well, and, and the guys really appreciate that. Excellent, excellent. So, mm -hmm. so Kevin, when you sell the Shop Boss product to, to a shop, how often are they looking for time tracking? That's one question, and the other is, of your shops that use it, do you know how many utilize the time, tra the, the time module? Yeah, I would say most of the shops that we currently are onboarding are asking about it in some capacity because efficiency is literally becoming the name of the game. I mean, it has been for at least a little while, but I think if you see with basically any industry thought leadership piece that's going on right now or talk to any coach or like yourself Vic, um, or you know anyone else that's got a voice in the market, technician efficiency is, is really a big part of that. So um, number one is the interest is definitely there. It, it comes through in just about every single demo, every single trial call that we have to sort of gauge interest. In terms of utilization, um, it's definitely growing. I mean, you know, I would say over 50% of our customer base uses it in some capacity. Okay. Danielle had mentioned before tech mode, um, which is something that we sort of pioneered, which allows the technician to have access to essentially a version of Shop Boss to do their job and not be distracted by other features, components, reporting that doesn't necessarily factor into their daily schedule um, or their daily duties. So the ability to provide things like that, and then, by the way, that's across all packages. That's not something that we just sell as, you know, as like a premium add-on. That's something that we really believe in. Um, we've done a lot of work on the efficiency side of things. We recognize that it's, you know, very important not only for, you know, from a time clock standpoint, but also just the UI of the program itself. Mm -hmm. So how many clicks does it take to, you know, create a create a vehicle inspection, right? How, what does it take to add media to that? So um, we're trying to speed up that process as much as possible, not only because we know that technicians working on vehicles, you know, time is money, but also working in the program itself. Like mm -hmm. they need the ability to get through an RO, um, not only quickly, but also accurately, um, you know, to, to make sure that everything is documented and, and where it needs to be. Can you <laughs> expand on that feature of tech mode? Talk about what, uh, um, sure. what all it, it does yeah. inside of Shop Boss and besides time tracking, what else does a lot of the technician to, to do? 
Yeah, sure. So, you know, probably the obviously the biggest thing when when we first developed it, we it was all based off of user roles and permissions. So we knew that you know the different roles at the actual company itself, um, from owner to manager to technician to service advisor, whatever you know persona um, or profile at the shop, we knew we needed something that was you know very tailored to the technician and actually doing. Uh, their work. So whether it be, you know, vindicoding or a di- digital vehicle inspection, the ability, like Danielle had said before, uh, time tracking, um, it's really sort of a lighter version of Shop Boss that allows them to access it across, you know, on their tablets. I think, Danielle, maybe you had mentioned that um, your guys work uh, with mobile devices or handheld devices there as well. But really, that's the, those are the main things that the technician is going to be accessing throughout the data. Might be a good question for Danielle too to see, you know, what what in that sort of bag her guys utilize the most. My guess is it would probably be time clocks and some of the DVI stuff. Um, you know, especially because that's something again that we provide across all versions of the product. Um, you know, you talk about technician efficiency. We certainly understand that vehicle inspections are sort of becoming table stakes now as well. There's different ways to to go about that, right? Against different shades, but. Um, you know, really, we want to make sure that they have that power and that functionality at their fingertips. Kevin, I'm supposed to be the one coming up with those seamless segues between things. But my next question was going to be to Danielle. What are the uh, the primary modules, the primary elements of really any shop management system that you depend on and you, you know, you want to see what is your ideal uh, you know, you know, SMS. Are there things that you know you'd like to see that you, that you haven't found yet? Or for me, um, some of the guys at Shop Boss are now going to go. Okay, we know this. This sounds like a broken record, but um, better inventory tracking. I something that works. Um, the inventory in my current program is is something that I struggle with basically on a daily basis. Um, however, um, the team at Shop Boss is very, very um, helpful with me and they, they, they have done a lot of work with me to try to help with that inventory program. Um, but the inventory module, if I could get uh, a better inventory module within Shop Bo- or within my um, shop management solution, that would be great, um, but what would make it? What would make it better? Shop Bus has um, a a different way of tracking inventory. They have kind of a, a non inventory module and then an inventory module, and um, it's just, in my opinion, and I'm just an end user, but it's it's um, it's rhetorical and it duplicates the effort. So. I wind up getting negative values a lot. And of course, we all know that you can't get a minus one brake shoe. <laughs> it's not possible. But um, the the inventory system struggles with that. And I, you know, some of it's us as users not being able to understand it properly. And some of it's that what I call a shadow inventory, which it's just confusing a little bit. and. Um, it would be good if there was only one inventory module in there and then we didn't have to worry about negatives. So um, it's it's quite complicated and confusing, but um, I keep getting, it's the way we enter the inventory and it would be nice if that was more streamlined and then it wasn't open for error. So I, I like to you know, keep a track of my inventory really good. And so if I was to wave a magic wand, I would add a better inventory module into um, the program. Some other things that I really like are, you know, the fact that we can take pictures and upload it directly to the invoice or directly to the work order. So if we have customers who um, have worn their brake pads right down to the metal, I can take a photo of that and actually upload it to the work order. So then, you know, when the customer comes in, I can show them the photo and I can say, well, you know, here's what your brake pads look like. The inventory tracking is interesting as a forecasting tool. Uh, you know, are you able to look at the demographics in your area and cross-reference those kinds of things? Is that something that would be helpful to you if you, you know, uh, you know to figure out, okay, these are the number of Dodge cars that were sold 
in this area, and we know that those left front headlights are failing on them at a fairly regular basis, you can reach out to those customers. Is that a, is that something that a shop management system can, you know, hypothetically help you with when it comes to your marketing efforts? I mean, it, yeah, I could see that being very helpful for sure. Um, absolutely. Like if we knew a little profile of the makes and models that were most um, commonly bought up here and then we could know about their common fails. Absolutely. I don't know if it's something that could be rolled into an SMS software. And um, I also just don't know how much usage it would get. Like for my own shop, I can only speak from my own experience, but um, I don't know how much time I would have to research, you know, that. So if it was really handy and, and quite easily accessible, then that would be, you know, fantastic, especially for, um, you know, parts ordering. But I guess Kavan might be able to answer that question better because I don't know how that would integrate into its shop management system. <clears throat> Yeah, you actually hit the the nail on the head, and I'm glad that you know Doug kind of said the magic word there with forecasting. So um, recently, um, we released um, a product called Bossboard, which is our single view analytics dashboard. We understand that there is pretty big need, especially in the market, to have more consolidated reporting. Customer reports are great; we do customer reports all the time. But in order for a shop owner to really get a good view of the success of their shop across the board in a very easily digestible format. Um, we launched this Bossboard product and it's been doing you know very well. And the first phase of that was really understanding what single view meant to the shop owner. So like to Danielle, for instance, what does that mean from a KPI tracking standpoint? What are important metrics that you want to look at? Phase two is actually where we potentially roll in some of that market data um, and actually do forecasting as well as regional comparisons. Um, there's a lot of data that's out in the market right now that could potentially connect to it. And obviously with our open APIs, we could ingest that pretty easily, but that's definitely on our roadmap as far as providing that type of ability. Um, I think the other piece, which also was brought up was the advertising portion. Um, you know, some shops will do their advertising based off of, you know, what the um, regional competition is based off of what they're seeing for, you know, pulling customers. And some of them have a very robust view into that. What maybe they have, you know, a website, maybe they have a marketing campaign, maybe they have an internal marketing module uh, that they can use towards as well. We do a lot of integrations with the marketing um, partners um, that connect to our system, pull customer information that will actually do advertising based on that. So uh, loyalty, retention, there's a lot of different campaigns and strategies that can actually go into that. But really, sort of the at least in our estimation, the baseline metrics and tracking is what's going to drive that entire project and that entire process as we move through the end of the year. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of things <laughs> that we could keep going on. So, but let me go ahead and button up what we've already covered. So, like the buffet in an SMS, choose wisely. There is a best fit for the customer out there for their unique abilities, and we know that your product, Shop Boss, can fit a lot of those abilities. Data migration, huge importance. Don't chase the shiny object. Don't go for the flavor of the month, as Kevin said. Take your time to vet it. Research, and again, take your time. The, the time tracking module is a plus. If you're tracking efficiency and, and you want to become more profitable, have a time tracking module in there. And not only track, use it. Train your people to use it. If, it ha if you have a, a tech mode, that is fantastic. So by taking your time and partnering with a partner who <clears throat> understands your needs, you'll save time, you'll save money, and most importantly, you'll save frustration and become more profitable by having the right SMS system run your business. Mm -hmm. Great wrap up, Vic, thank you. This episode of Shop Owner Solutions has been brought to you by Shop Boss, the leading shop management solution for independent auto repair shops. Built by a former shop owner, Shop Boss offers all the cutting edge features and integrations you need to keep your shop on top, from built in DVI and remote payments capabilities to a powerful business reporting dashboard. You can try this cloud based solution free for 30 days. Visit shopboss.net slash podcast to learn more. Once again, I'd like to thank 
Our guest today, Danielle Commander from Commander Mechanical in Claremont, Alberta, Canada, and Kevin Robinson from Shop Boss. Thank you for being part of the discussion today. Thank you for thank having you. me. Vic, thank you for joining me today. It was great talking to you. Pleasure being here. <sighs> well, I'm full, so I think it's time to say goodbye. We'll talk to you all later. Have a great day.